So guys, thank you so much for joining me live um, today. I have up to an hour with you guys if you want me for an hour. We'll see how we go. Um, sometimes it's I know it's really hard to stay um, focused for that long when you're on a screen. It's much easier to listen when you're sort of in person and can get that live energy. Oh, Claire's joined as well. Oh my God, yay, I'm so excited. Um, but what I thought I would do was, I don't really want to talk as in like just present at you for an hour. Um, I just wanted to really share a few things today that are part of the daily rituals and practices that I, I have come to sort of make my thing, um, which is why the guys asked me to come and share um, on that. And, and um, yeah, I think there's three in particular, um, and I've done these for a few different um, talks online as well. So um, there's three in particular out of these daily rituals that I've sort of developed, um, or juicy rituals as I call them, because my business is a juicy movement, um, that I thought were really core and relevant to what's going on or what has been going at the moment. Um, I don't know where everyone's coming from, if you're majority of Perth or everywhere, but I know right now it's definitely um, different to say last week or the week before, thankfully. Um, so things are starting to brighten up. So some of these, um, yeah, well, I still think they're relevant, but they're, they're changing a little bit with what we're allowed to do. Um, but these are probably the ones that I, I wanted everyone to focus on the most during isolation. Um, and I know that a lot of people are still experiencing it quite harshly, depending where you are. Um, and then I'm just going to cover off a little bit on some of the other rituals. But at the end of the day, I can sit here and I can go through, you know, all of my background and all the things I do. But I'm just going to say, if you like what you've been seeing, I've been in here every day sharing gratitude. Um, if you like what you're here today, then just go and follow, head on my website, um, carlathomas.com.au or go and follow me on my socials because you'll, you'll get to then obviously dig into a lot more about what I do and then you can reach out on anything else um, from there. But I don't want to, yeah, kind of... Um, kill time going to all of those things today. So um, daily rituals, pop a little comment or um, a like or love if this is something that's really important to you or you have any habits and practices that you are really committed to doing or that you've noticed make a difference to your health and well-being in your day. Maybe they're things that you were doing already before, um, you know, Corona, maybe the things that you've now learnt to incorporate and or really found um, important to be committed to um, because of this and that you didn't have the time for before. Pop them in here. Um, for me, daily rituals and practices um, have been such a crucial component of my mental health and well-being for many years now. Um, I sort of started, I guess, my, my journey into holistic health, um, oh God, coming over, over 10 years now, like 11 years now, um, quite the young age of 22 after being on and off medication for anxiety and depression. And I was starting to find my toes in something that I wanted to study coming from a dancer background. I'd always had a vested interest in health and wellness, even if I didn't know what the beep I was doing um, with it, <laughs> realistically. Um, so as I started my studies in, in the holistic realm um, and was sort of getting introduced to more and more people in the, in, in the health circle, whether we're with, you know, different um, places that I worked, um, I started to slowly learn that by doing certain things every day consistently, certain practices, I was actually beginning to change my 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 thought process, my my health on both a mind body um, and a, a spirit, I guess, aspect um, of well being. Um, and developing these over the years, they've sort of chopped and changed, or you know, altered slightly, but the foundations have always been there, and that's what I've become really passionate about teaching because I truly believe that. Health, guys, is really simple, um, and it just boils down to whether or not we're willing to do the things consistently every day or not. Um, that's the only difference. Um, if we're willing to go to work on ourselves, especially during this time, and I'm the first to say that I have been challenged. <laughs> you know, mark my word that even the best of us, um, even the guys behind Happiness Aid, we've all all been challenged in ways we hadn't before. It's just that some of us had tools and resources um, that we, we, we've known, we've learned, we've already used and we've practiced that we just tapped into even harder. Um, and that's why this page was um, started. And, and I, you know, hats off to the guys because we wanted to be able to share these and give you the best opportunity of coming through this um, and rising above it. So for me, these daily rituals I find are not important to do when times are all great and everything's happy. 
they're most important to do when you are being challenged. And that's generally the time that people will drop off their health habits, unfortunately, because it's harder to do. Um, It's easy to be healthy and follow all the things we want to do when we're feeling energized and happy. It's harder to commit to those when we aren't jumping out of bed every day and we are facing challenges and and we're not happy about how our situations are. So um, I just dug in more than ever. I needed to just as much into putting even more time aside than I already do every day into these rituals Um, and the three in particular that got me through and and I've really been finding has has been helping others are what I'm going to be covering so also if you do um, any questions in here and comments and I miss them out guys one my eyesight is shocking and um, two I'm yeah because all this is small I'm probably just going to want to keep going and I'll try and get back to stuff later but I love that you're sharing in the comments because if not for me anyone else that's reading these is getting to getting to read as well which is really really important so First one is mindset. So um, I love this quote. And if you don't follow Jim Quick, um, Quick is in K-W-I-K, please do. He's a genius. I love him. Uh, and he says, how you do anything is how you do everything. And I really believe that um, both on our personal life and our professional life, how we rock up and show up every day in one area is likely to be how we show up in everything else. So how you start your day for me, morning rituals are the most important thing that you can commit to. It sets you up for success for the day. And I can hand on my heart say that the difference between even half an hour of doing something that's going to light me up, fill my soul, um, add a positive um, aspect to, to my thoughts and my, and my feelings can make the biggest difference in how I go about the rest of my day, which is why I don't falter on my morning rituals. It's a big reason why I get up early in the morning because let's face it, guys, most people unfortunately get up just as they have to roll out of bed, hop in the shower, get breakfast, get kids, whatever. And literally from the first thing, what they do is put all their power into everybody else, all their energy into everybody else instead of filling your cup first. It's like the worst thing that you can do. Even five minutes, just anything that you can do that gives you time for yourself first is most, most important. So um, for example, um, what I would say is go to sleep with your phone on airplane mode. Um, and especially at the moment, because unfortunately, and this is what a lot of you know people do, regardless of um, uh, what's been going with Corona or not, is start their day listening to the news. Now, let's face it, guys, most of the time, the news ain't happy. <laughs> it's basically bogging your mind straight away with negative and sad and, and quite... Um, Uh, worrying things so um, and you know this flashes up on your phone as well so go to go to bed with your phone in airplane mode that way first thing in the morning you're not looking at all these notifications that have popped up Um, I do that um, and my phone doesn't come off airplane mode until I've done my morning rituals whatever it looks like for that day so aim if you can for the first 45 minutes um, to an hour of it being about you um, I know that um, it was with kids were being at home and things like that, it was deemed as harder. But look, put it this way, there's always going to be hard and you've got to choose your hard. Um, you know, and I just think everyone's got the same amount of time in the day. You've just got to choose what it's a priority is. Hopefully you're a priority. Um, and sometimes you've got to sacrifice things like an extra half an hour of sleep or um, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, like a shorter lunch break or whatever it is. You've just got to find the space in the day. I don't get out of bed every day, like snow white and singing and all the rest of it. It's just that I know that I need to do that for myself, um, in order to be able to give the best of myself to everybody else throughout the day. So aim to get 45 minutes or an hour to yourself. Um, for me, um, I like to make sure that I'm getting um, something positive. So it could be a podcast first thing in the morning that I'm listening to. Um, It could be reading, um, music, whatever mood I'm in. Um, It could be meditation and gratitude and a mix of all of the above. So be so mindful of what you allow into your mind at the start of the day. If you're somebody that's straight away basically checking the news around what's going on with corona first thing in the day, what are the odds that that's literally going to be the mood or the thought process that you're going to take into everything else that you do for the day so um i like to and we are, and we can only um take in so much energy throughout the day as well guys like we can only take in so much into our mind um and just as we can equally put out so be so mindful of what you're filling your head with every single day um 
I like to, um, you know, get moving in the morning as well because that's really important for your mindset. I think a lot of people associate physical activity just with, um, you know, staying slim or fit or whatever else. Um, but really, it's such an important component of um, uh, how our thoughts begin to go because we're releasing the serotonin, the dopamine, all these feel-good hormones. Um, yeah, don't allow, as I said, please don't pop the news first thing on the TV or on the radio or in the car. Um, that's something that I found difficult and very frustrating, if I'm honest at the moment. Um, not so much now, but the beginning, every time I hopped into my car, everything was basically based around corona. And I thought, hang on a minute, let the news section be about that. And I don't know if you can agree with me here, put a like or a thumbs up, but everything else should just be radio like normal. And it was so bad because you couldn't escape it. So the thing is, we can sit there and say, oh, it's around me everywhere. But if you don't want to take in information, it's like out of sight, out of mind. Don't have the TV on. Don't play those radio stations. Don't buy the paper. Do you know what I mean? And I've, I've said this with it's not about being ignorant in, in, in what we do or, you know, what we know. It's about just taking in the information we need to know. Uh, and that's it versus bogging our minds with it every single day. So, um, yeah, know what you need to know. So I'm just going out of this outside. Of my yeah, that's pretty much it. So mindset stuff, basically start your day with things that are enhancing your mindset and setting you up for success and adding versus taking away. That's, that's my number one point there because everything starts with mindset. And if your mindset's not in a great place, it's guaranteed the rest of your day, everything, your coping mechanisms are going to be down and everything else is going to get to you more than it would um, otherwise. Um, an example of that is this morning. Um, so I woke up grumpy. Yeah, I do so too. Oh, Jules, you decided to join. Thanks, buddy. Um, <laughs> and no comments about the active wear. <laughs> So this morning I woke up a little bit grumpy. Um, I've, I've been having great days with work, but I've just not been getting as much sleep. Um, but I got up out of bed. I did my usual cold nip swim in the morning. And guess what? I got home and I wasn't grumpy anymore because I went and did something really good for me. I got some water. I got some air. I got some connectivity. Um, I got a laugh in. Um, and yeah, I woke my soul. And, you know, imagine if I just chosen to stay in bed. What a difference my day would have been. I've been on fire all day because of that. So really do anything you know is going to be so positive in your mindset. It's not easy at the beginning, but I guarantee the more you do it and the more you make a practice and a habit out of it, the easier it becomes so that it's just like a non-negotiable and that's what you want to create. Um, okay, the second thing that I think is really important, and actually I think over here we've been really good with it, um, has been movement. So I'm just trying to put some brightness in here. Um, has been movement. So um, it has been frustrating not being able to go to the usual places me included. I love going to my gyms and exercise studios, not so much just for the exercise, but for the social component um, as well, what I get out of it. But we can either make excuses or we can just find um, replacements or substitutes. So um, I think... For me, the challenge was not being able to go running indoors. I like a treadmill, um, but I just gave up. Doing outside doesn't suit me, but guess what? I've just been walking twice a day um, and been walking for longer times and have really enjoyed it, to be honest. Um, normally, I just get out with a dog once, but every day I've been getting out um, for an hour walk on my own as well with some music or a podcast, either by the river or by the coast, and been getting that extra time, um, which has been fantastic because normally I'd run indoors. Now I'm getting outside even more so, which is important if we can and do it safely because we know that getting fresh air and sunlight and all of that and being near water is amazing for us. Um, if we have that choice. So um, I've also just been doing things indoors. So I've been supporting local businesses by having um, online memberships um, and doing things like Jungle Body and yoga and Pilates and that online. It's not ideal. I'd rather be going out to the classes, but I'm doing it. I, you know what I mean? So um, we can find a way. Um, and I think I've seen some wicked videos. Someone posted up that someone literally did like a half marathon in their apartment in Europe. Like, can you imagine doing, like, just running around your apartment for God knows how long to do, like, how many Ks of a run or whatever it was? Insane. But when you're committed, right, like, you make it work. So, um, yeah, walks, jogs, parks, um, you know, going with a friend when you've been able to, even social distancing, so getting that time to catch up um, and have a have a walk at the same time. Like Jules and I, we've done that. Um 
Uh, and then scheduling in like a routine. So I think what happened with a lot during um, Corona is if all of a sudden you were working from home and had it, or you weren't working at all, it's very easy to at first be like, this is so cool. But then after a while, you're kind of like, oh God, I've got no routine. I've got no purpose. Um, you kind of forget about things. And, and I think we are people who need to have like, flexibility and flow but I think human beings work really well in having some aspects of their life organized and set in place because it's something to look forward to and work towards so for me exercise was no different um I mean I was still working from home anyway but like just because I couldn't go physically to a class somewhere I still scheduled it in as part of my day where I was going to fit in that that jungle body class where I was going to fit in the walk time or where I was going to fit in you know that little extra break to get the dog to the park whatever it was it's all been part of my schedule which is super important um so schedule in that exercise and you're likely not to miss out and I've, as I say to clients all the time who were this is just such a big thing they don't do it just start with 30 minutes don't overwhelm yourself um, just doing 30 minutes a day um, makes the biggest difference in the world. And again, we're talking so much about mental health and well-being, guys. So moving about, especially being limited to your house and apartment and you're not moving about by doing day-to-day -day errands or socializing or getting out and about on a weekend. You've got to make up for it moving otherwise. Hence why I've been probably doing more exercise, not always excessive, but it's just to be able to get moving and make sure I am constantly getting that blood flow uh, and I'm constantly invigorating my mind um, and, and all those, those good feel-good hormones. Um, what else? Yeah, have a buddy if you can because um, it's the social connection aspect as well. And, and look, let's be honest, that's something that we've really missed. That's why I've been on groups like this all the time. So movement's super important. Um, the third major one, which unfortunately has kind of rattled me um, in seeing a lot of people's kind of feeds is the nourishment part of it. And it's not about nourishing the body. If anything, it's about nourishing the brain. So poor fuel, poor performance. It's as simple as that. There's a reason why some of us can be going from day and night. And I get told all the time, how do you have so much energy? Man, it's because of all the things I do for myself. It's how I feel myself. It's because I move. Um, they're the two things um, to begin with. Obviously, in the mindset component, starting my day right. And then anything else I can fit in in daily rituals is golden. But having those basically means I've got the energy and the stamina and the mindset to be able to keep giving um, throughout the days, those long days. So, um, there was, uh, I think it was, I heard Carrie, um, Bickmore. She was like, she said on the radio, like there's been two people that come out of Corona. There's going to be the ones who are fitter than ever. That's not physically, that's mentally as well, because we're building on this strength and they're going to be ones who walk out of this basically in all sorts of trouble, which was a what we were kind of worried about as health experts, you know, those who sort of just give up everything or don't keep putting those practices into place. Um, if anything, this was a time more than ever that we should have been so, so focused and cautious on nutrition and what we're putting in our bodies because of the fact we knew that we were limited in certain areas and we knew that our mental well-being was being tested like tenfold so poor nutrition was only going to contribute to those you know sad feelings those loneliness those frustrations any anxiety that we were getting at the same time so um i i think you know i'm not a huge drinker but i've definitely drunk less um i still you know i wasn't someone who's drinking every day just because i was at home or whatever um if anything it was less because i wasn't out socially as much so i didn't have that component um and food wise look i eat relatively healthy i'm not a strict person in any way i don't believe in fads or being regimented and stuff it's just that i fuel my body with food that it loves and craves and that's generally like healthy um but you know i like to indulge on the weekends here and there and being out but it's not something I'll do if I'm just sitting at home. So I found myself, if anything, feeling in, in like the healthiest on that aspect. But I did it more than anything because I knew that my mind was fragile, more fragile than it had been before. And I just didn't want to fall into a hole, all those patterns. It was okay to feel those moments, but I didn't want to stay there. So I knew I really, really had to make sure I wasn't putting anything in my body that was also going to like basically take me to a you know a lower a lower place so really think about what you're um you're putting into your body think about what you're putting into your house um so out of sight out of mind if you're stocking all of this crap in your fridge and in your pantry well and then you're bored and you're bored eating or you're frustrating eating or you're sad eating well you can go for it but if it's not in your house you kind of can't 
Um, so I say that to, to, to anyone, no matter what you're doing, don't, don't put those temptations in front of you. It's the same with booze. Um, so what else am I going here? I always go off thought. Yeah. So just be careful of that. And the same with supplementation. I'm all for it. Whatever you want to do and use, just make sure it's good for you. But you know, up those certain things that were going to help you during this time. Um, you know, for me, it's, it's things like my, my, uh, medicinal mushroom tinctures and things like that, that I, I knew I needed for immunity and brain health and, and all those good oils and fats and your omegas and things like that in particular, which we know are very, very important for our nervous system. So please, um, if there's one thing I can say to take away, make sure you are absolutely not cutting out the good fats that you need and getting as much as you can um, in good fats, um, both on your plate um, and any additional ones, however you want to do that. Super, super important. I think yesterday, I'm somebody who intuitively eats and that comes over time. You learn how to, but, um, yesterday I was just feeling like my brain was being zapped. I've had a big week of giving out mentally. Uh, one of the foods that I generally crave or good fats is walnuts. And we know that walnuts are fantastic for the brain. They, they look like the brain. They come in a shell like the brain does the cranium. And I was just craving it. And I literally just went in for a massive handful of walnuts before, you know, in the middle of a break and went back to work because that's just what I needed to keep going. So yeah, don't forget the power of food when it comes to your thought and your mind. Um, it's super, super important. And those good fats are in your food and in your decision making. Um, they're the main ones. So they're the main rituals. And that's the thing. Like, I think everyone kind of thinks that health or keeping a healthy mind is really complicated or hard. It's not. It's really simple. It just comes down to doing the, the practice every single day. So some other ones that I'm just going to share um, quickly, but they're the ones I wanted to get stuck into. Hopefully they're helping. Hopefully this has been good. I'm trying to see the comments. As I said, guys, I'm really bad at concentrating to try and say what I want to and also read the comments. But um, yeah, whole food nutrition, stretching and moving every single day. Um, I generally start at least three or four mornings a week by rolling out my yoga mat, putting good music on or whatever music I want, uh, doing a stretch and a foam roll for like 20 minutes or more um, to get everything moving. Um, I recommend you do that or I take the dog straight for a walk first thing in the morning with podcast or music in my ears around the river for half an hour. Um, I just need to get moving. The worst thing I can do is just try and get out. I work from home predominantly in front of a screen. I cannot roll out of bed and just sit in front of a computer um, or just go straight to you know a meeting or whatever. So stretch, it's amazing for you. It's good for your health as well. It gives you breath. Get those lungs moving. Breath is everything when it comes to mental health and basically managing any stress and anxiety we feel as well. It's why meditation is fantastic too. Uh, even if it's just five minutes in the morning um, because it's just, again, even if it's just breathing, even a minute, just a breath. What a difference. Um, what else has been great? Personal development. Well, as I said, I think podcasts are great for this. I mean, look, you read books. Um, again, I think Jim Quick, I mentioned earlier, was saying people don't read anymore. Like reading is so important for brain health. Um, it's such a great way to tune out as well, but it's such an important thing for all of our skills and tools and how our processes work. So find something that you want to read, um, but just spend some time reading things ideally that <laughs> are beneficial and don't kill your brain cells other than a Friday night. I'm all for a Friday night with a glass of wine and a gossip magazine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, um, but otherwise books, podcasts, things like this, getting into these live streams, um, are fantastic. If that's how you want to start your day or throughout the day, Ted talks, um, YouTubes. Yeah. It's heaps of, heaps of resources. Feel yourself right. Starting with breakfast. That's my other daily ritual. It's a non-negotiable. I am, I mean, they call it fasting. I just basically say I don't eat until I'm hungry again. And for me, you know, I don't need to eat until another 14 hours between, you know, sort of dinner and getting up or so. But breakfast is a non-negotiable for me. I must, must, must have a good breakfast, um, whatever time that is for you at the start of the day. Um, good nutrition is so, so important. Again, this goes into the rest of your day, how you think, how you feel, what you take on, your coping me mechanisms, what you can basically, you know, is like water off a duck's back if you're feeling really strong up here. So make sure you're having a really solid um, well-rounded foundational good food breakfast. Okay. 
Um, movement we've covered, drink lots of water. Um, a lot of the time people have actually got a dehydrated brain. Um, I always have a water bottle with me wherever I go. Um, in fact, I should probably take a sip now. Um, a lot of the time if you've got a headache or you're tired or you're not thinking well, you might just need to basically give your brain a good shower with water. Alcohol, wine, beer accepted on a Friday or a Saturday night. <laughs> on occasion too. Um, but yeah, make sure you're drinking lots of water. They're very important for your brain health. It's like a sponge. Okay, you don't want it to dry out. You want it to be like heavy and full, um, full of good hydration and H2O. Me time is another important daily ritual. Um, me time means actually like not giving your energy to anybody else. Basically, it's doing something that you love for you and it's not giving out. It's filling up your cup. Um, again, this is something I've done even more of. I'm very strict on making sure I get me time every single day because I give a lot of myself out every day. Um, and especially over weekends, recharging even more. But I need to make sure that I'm not, um, yeah, giving out to anybody else in time, which is why I love my coast walks with some music by myself because it literally is just me. Um, so find what that looks like for you. It might be different every day, but me time is super, super important. Um, and yeah, just as I said, you've got to fill your own cup before you can fill anybody else's, um, especially during these times, um, when our cups, it's harder, it's been harder to fill them. And I've, I've been very open about that too. I'm somebody who's used to basically, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Functioning on an overflowing cup. And my cup has been half full up until maybe like last week. I finally felt like I'd had, you know, almost a week of things in place as restrictions were lifting where I was having those experiences that were starting to fill my cup and my cup was finally full. It's not overflowing yet, but it's full. And what a difference that makes to being on like between empty to half. Um, so may, yeah, make sure you're doing that and you put even more things in place. It might be stolen moments. We might not just be able to put a set hour aside. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to just look a certain way. It just needs to be done and in there. Um, connection and relationships. This has been probably one of the toughest challenges during this time. Um, but I'm glad we have things like this page and happiness aid where a lot of people have had somewhere people to connect to. That's been that lift and that go to every single day. I know a lot of people have done like online zooms and group catch ups or more phone calls and things like that, which has been wonderful. Um, but connection is super important and, you know, we've seen wonderful examples of that in places where people were really limited, like, um, banging the pots in New York when, you know, it's happy, it's thank you hour for the health, um, professionals and in Italy, I love this. They were like singing on their balconies together. And I think I saw one video where they'd created these sticks with their wine glasses on the end to do with cheers. Like, those tiny things, um, for me, I'll set an example. Um, I'm online a lot during work and I am having this discussion with, you know, Jules and that. It can get quite overwhelming because it's just so much screen time. Um, I think for a lot of screens where we went, if it wasn't what you do for a day job, but when you're behind it all the time, um, it can be very tiring to then want to get onto a screen and do your connecting on your non-work um, aspect of life. Um, but you know, something for me, for example, um, was we did a virtual dip for cold nips. Um, we obviously had the cold nips is where we go swimming every Wednesday mornings, big group of people once a week in Perth, we all gather at a beach and just jump in like absolute idiots thriving on life. And if you can stay for a couple, you do at the moment, we're just doing people who want to do it are doing small pods to stick with the rules, but um, we hadn't done one in for a while and I think everyone was feeling it. So the boys organized a virtual dip and it sounded like the stupidest thing because, you know, like how do you dip? But well, basically someone, you know, I did it from my shower. Someone was in a bath, someone did it outside with a hose and we just got all amongst it and we connected for half an hour and we laughed um, and giggled. And that half an hour, I was literally, it happened during a week where I was just feeling so flat and over this. And I, I was almost crying with happiness because what that half an hour of connecting online did for me. So that's why I think what these boys have done with this is just so amazing because it can literally change the course of someone's day or evening by coming in here and connecting with someone that's fucking high vibing um, and just gives you something for yourself. So connection relationships is super important and gratitude, which I probably don't really need to go much into because 
you know, gratitude is kind of what this has been so much about. I've loved seeing how many people have got on here and found those little sources of gratitude that they can share um, every single day. I've, that's been the simple thing for me to be able to connect with you guys in here. Um, I'd love to have been doing lives more often, but just to get in here every day and share three things that I'm grateful for um, and, and, and you know, always find something because there's always something we can be grateful for. And I think learning to be grateful every day, not for an obvious thing or not because something didn't go wrong, but in in the littlest things. And even during like the, the shitty days that I've had, I've always found something or someone to be grateful for, even if it's just been the fact that I'm still in a better position than others in other parts of the country or other parts of the world, um, you know, and being like, hey, I've had a beach every day. Hey, I've had the ability to go outside for a walk every day. Hey, I've still got a job and a work. If they're three things, you know. So they're daily rituals and habits that, guys, I basically live and breathe um, all the time, not just through corona. I really put these into practice because they're all parts of a healthy, a healthy body, a healthy mind. It isn't just nutrition. It isn't just movement. Um, and also, too, I've just been big, which I think now that we're allowed out a little bit more in general, um, has been to disconnect to connect. So watching your screen time. So pick and choose when you're going to be on here. This is a great thing to be on, obviously. Um, but, you know, don't be on when you don't need to. Don't look at the stuff you don't need to. That's not really important. Choose your screen time. Um, and then, you know, disconnect to connect to other things that you may not have had time for, people that you haven't had time for um, before. Go back to hobbies, um, find new ones. A lot of people have during this time. Um, make phone calls. The big thing I've just said to my folks is, guys, you know, I'm on the screen a lot during work. Please don't send me bunches of messages and blah, blah, blah. Just give me a call at some point during the day or the evening. Let's just touch base for 10, 15 minutes, FaceTime or call versus just more texts that I have to send through. Um, and that's been something I've just had to set the boundary on, but that's been wonderful, you know, or if I'm in the car, I just check in with someone and um, get on a phone call, um, but have space for yourself and that time and create those boundaries there. So, um, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, look at that. I've ended up talking for close to 40 minutes anyway. No surprise. That always happens. Um, I didn't get any social media today. There's so many comments in here. I'm not going to be able to flick through them all. Um, I'm just going to go through on here quickly. There was one, well, it wasn't really one question. It was, oh, what's happened here? Um, someone wrote it in here in the section yesterday. Um, and there was a few questions in there. So I'm just going to try and cover a little bit on there, but otherwise I'm just going to say probably contact me directly. Um, so self-confidence is a big thing for me. How do you just get up and love yourself? Well, simply put, you work at it every damn day. Um, it's not something you ever just get or reach to. I believe that um, you can reach a space where you function confident most of the time. It doesn't ever mean there aren't things that test that confidence, but it's because you go to work on yourself every single day um, and you work at it. Um, and confidence is something that everyone struggles with. Um, there's such a misconception that if you've got this, this, this in your life and all these things you tick that you shouldn't have any confidence issues, but that's a load of crap. Um, I've had confidence issues. I have confidence issues every single, you know, every, every now and again. Um, I just don't, you know, sit in them very long. I make sure I go to work and do the things I need to, to pull myself back out of them and surround myself with the people that I do. Um, but I think it's something that you've got to really want to work out every day. And again, that just comes to... Um, educating yourself and spending time learning uh, and, and digging into the resources um, that all bring that kind of confidence about and who you spend your time with, um, you know, who you surround yourself with um, and what you choose to basically put into your ear. I, I think you build resilience over time. I think age brings a part of that and I think life experience brings a part of that, um, that you just maybe don't have so much when you're younger. Um, I think hands up. I mean, I'm 33 now. I'm by no means old, but I've definitely been through enough in my time to basically, you know, become quite resilient in overcoming a lot of challenges that have come my way. So confidence can test me um, and it may almost sort of get under my skin a little bit, but um, otherwise I'm so self-assured in who I am and, and, you know, knowing my worth now that I don't allow it to sit there. And I really encourage everyone. It's so worth spending the time to understand your worth and owning it um, because it makes a difference in all other aspects of your life. When it comes to letting go of the past and healing and forgiveness, again, that's just work. 
Um, it's so easy to want to stay in hate uh, and anger and resentment, but it only ends up hurting ourselves. Most of the time, the other person doesn't even feel it. Or if they do get it from you, they don't feel it at the depth that you do. Um, and I think it's just coming to the place of, do I want to function like this? Do I want to be that person? Do I want to live my life feeling like this forever? Um, and is it worth it for what? To prove a point? half the time no not really i also think it's not something that you can force i think so often we just want to be like i just want to be there i want to feel like this i don't want to hurt anymore but unfortunately you don't you have to do the work to get there the work isn't comfortable most of the time um we a lot of stuff comes up that we don't want to hear and listen to but we need to in order to get past it um and i think it just boils down to not making it about the other person I think so often people put healing down to um, it being about the other person who hurt us versus about healing for us and what we need to do for us because that person may never say sorry. That person may never understand what they did. They may never be sorry. So the best thing you can do is be okay with it and with yourself and get past it regardless of whatever outcome on, on the other side of it with that person. Um, and I think a healing process said you can't put a timeline on it. It's different for, for everyone and it depends on what you're healing from. I just think you've got to spend time every day doing what you can to, to nurture and learn. And that includes space. I think, unfortunately, like we can read and watch a lot of things, but then you need the space and the time to actually be able to take that in and think about it and look through your life or the situation and apply it and allow things to come up and all the emotions as well. Um, one of the, the best things I, I did last year for myself, if I'm completely honest, um, is um, really I took some time out for a good maybe six months or so of putting any major goals and commitments in my work um, while I knew that my personal life um, and healing from situations there needed to become a priority. And it's because I wanted the space to heal. I didn't want to have to be so busy that when I felt like I needed a breakdown or a cry or to go and do something for myself, I couldn't because my, my day was flat out. So I made sure that I allowed the space um, for all of that to come through. And in that, I was able to heal probably in, I don't know, it's a fast time, but I was able to, to heal over you know the year in a really good place um where maybe you know you can run into people you know five years later and you think the incident happened to them yesterday and you've just got to make a decision whether you want that to be you or not um steps to be happier you well i've already covered them daily rituals i think at the end of the day you, you've just got to do all the things that you, align with you that are in with your values that make you happy um who was it I was listened to the other day on what podcast was it Anyway, basically saying that the reason why most people are exhausted in it. Now, there's a reason, there's a difference between going to bed happily tired and feeling satisfied and just normal tired and then those exhausted every day and feeling just deflated and so far in energy. And it's because most people spend um, their days doing things they don't want to do. So spend your day, whether that's, you know, if you can't in your job at the moment, make sure that you are over and above it in you know, your, your personal aspect of life. Otherwise, if you, you know, change careers, people do it all the time. Um, and there are going to be some aspects of your personal life. Maybe you can't change right now, but focus on the way, the, the areas that you can and say yes to the things that you want to do. Because when you do that, it exerts energy, but it energizes you at the same time. And that's exactly why some people will have this abundance of this energy or this vibration that you just want to be around all the time and that's attractive because they're basically going about their day living in their purpose and doing the things that they absolutely love so that's how you do happiness think about it like spend time writing it down if you need to what makes you happy if you could do it all day every day regardless of time regardless of money what would you be doing and most people will write an exact opposite day of what their days look like i love the fact that people go what would you be doing every day i'm like mm, fucking what i'm doing might add a little bit more travel in there if I could and all the rest of it and maybe a bit more family time. But otherwise, everything else, I'm pretty much doing the things that I love doing. So that's what basically brings about happiness. You can eat all the right food. You can exercise till the cows come home. But if you are not doing anything else that makes you happy and lights you up, well, it doesn't really matter. Um, there's nothing worse than being a fit, healthy, eating, unhappy human. It doesn't work. I've tried it. Trust me. 
Um, and the major one at the moment, no clue where I want to do and where I want to be in life. Is that okay? Ha. Ah, yeah, embracing the unknown and the flow. Especially right now, hey? When people basically have had this out of control. It's been really interesting to watch on how people have reacted with corona. Now, I tell you what, if this has happened to me to the me of a year and a half ago, I think I would have been in such a different um, place in terms of how I've gotten through or coped with it myself. But um, I think learning to embrace the fact that we can't control everything um, and being to stop resisting it. Now, one of the best books you could ever read is The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle because it's all about that. And so often we get so stuck in our heads about the past or we get stuck in our heads about the future, which we can't predict. We just forget to sit in them. Well, what's happening right now? What's today? And I've learned to be like that when I get overwhelmed and I, I stop, I, I'm like, stop thinking about your list tomorrow for work. Just get through today. Tomorrow be tomorrow. Don't add that. Remember, I said we can only soak up so much energy in our brain every day. Focus on today. And the same, you know, when this, this shit comes up at night, I just, I read that books by my bedside table permanently and I read just passages from it and I remember just to go into the now. What is, what is wrong right now? What's stressful? And most of the time, there's nothing actually wrong in that moment. I'm just thinking about everything else um, and, and letting the noise get in, into me. And I'm thinking about the things that I can't change. So um, I think be okay with wherever you are now. The answers will come if you let them. So if we try and force things, I want to be there. I want to have the relationship. I want to have the perfect job. I want to have the income. I've gone through that now. I want to be able to travel now. I want to be able to see my friends now. I want it to be the end of the year now. I want us to be there and out of this now. And it's, the, it's the worst thing. It's just a mind fuck, basically. So you've kind of just got to be okay with where you are um, and be able to embrace the unknown, surrender to the outcome um, that's there for you because it's going to be greater than what you ever thought. Um, and I think quite often those of us who've had our lives turned upside down in a really kind of drastic experience or way. I mean, obviously you guys know Julian's story in here um, and what that does for you, but it, it, it changes your mind in really realizing that you can't plan out every aspect of your life. Um, for me last year, that came in the form of basically my, my marriage ending. That was all of what last year was about, but it was such a blessing in a long way because I thought I had my life mapped out and now all of a sudden I didn't. And what it gave me was that resilience to be okay with things changing, um, to be okay with being flexible and flowing in a way I never had before and be okay with things that I hadn't expected or planned happening. So while I, wasn't, I haven't been loving this situation we've been in, I haven't um, panicked, you know, I never panicked at any stage. Did I have moments where I felt sad and frustrated and lonely? Yeah, but I've never been panicky about what's going on. I've kind of trusted everything will kind of just work itself out. So I'm not going to panic about money or the economy. It's not going to do anything anyway. It's out of my control to, to an aspect. All I could control was myself and getting myself in a good place through this and showing up every day. So be okay with not knowing what you want at the moment. It was actually one of the best things last year, kind of just going, let's see where life's going to take me for a little while. And so many wonderful things popped up. So you just got to trust. You got to trust the universe has your back um, a little bit and be okay to have that space to let things come and finding your true calling, oh shit, that's a hard one. Um, again, you can't find it. It's not something you can force and just go to the shop and buy it. Life takes you there. I think you kind of figure it out based on the things that you naturally love doing, um, love learning about, love being around, um, in who you admire. I think they're the things that will sort of lead to your calling and experience in life. Um, for me, it was my own health issues that led me down the holistic coaching path. Um, you know, and I'm only using Jules' example, obviously, because everyone knows who he is. But obviously, we know that it was, you know, um, what happened in his life with, you know, his father and his cousin, his friend. All of that led him to basically wanting to to help everybody feel good and feel happy um, in life, and 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 you know. Uh, support their mental well-being so I think you find your calling through experience I think most of the time you find your calling actually through a challenge um, that's pretty much quite common so I think spend time reflecting journal really think about your life set that space up um, every single day so wow that was a lot that I answered in there but there was one person who put all these questions in there so 
Um, where are we for time? 5.51. Okay. Nine minutes. I'm just reading some of these comments as they pop through. Um, love it. Thank you. Oh, there's always a good day and a bad day. Yes, one of my favorite comments, and I've actually got it in my book um, or quotes, is every day is a good day. Some are just better than others. And I remind myself of that all the time because I have days where I'm not like killing it and feeling like on fire. Not today. Today I'm on fire. It's been brilliant. But I have days where I'm not always feeling like that and I'm tired. I'm a bit worn out. But I just say not, not every day can be up there, but it's always a good one. Um, agree with what you learn as you age. I'm 65 and get a lot from these presentations. Oh, Marie, thank you. Yeah, I mean, life experience, right? I mean, I say all the time, I feel sorry for my clients that had me at 22, 23, aren't you? Shit. And I'm probably going to look back in 10 years and be like, oh my God, you still knew shit back then. But, you know, I think that's why I enjoy getting older, to be honest, because I feel like I know more about myself and who I am every year and I feel good about that. So thank you, Marie. Um, Troy, thank you for sharing your experience. Off to eat dinner. Yeah, I know. I'm literally like, what are food? Feel me. I hear you, Troy. Off you go. Natasha, thank you so much. Hopefully they were all your questions pretty much at the end. So I hope that's answered a lot for you. Priya, love it. Thank you for coming on, darling, and for all your help and support and getting this sorted. Um, oh, good cry. Yes, guys, cries don't have to be bad. We associate crying as being a bad thing. Oh my God, the release you get from that. I can't tell you the amount of times I cry at the end of yoga, if I cried at the beach, listening to a song, I've had cries at night. I don't always say it's a bad thing because I think when we hold it on, it's the worst. Hence why I say space is beautiful when you need to just fall apart, cry, you let it out. It's therapeutic um, when you allow it to happen. So go for it. Um, I'm trying to go through some of these comments the thing I missed. Yeah, social media time. Yeah, we have this idea that we need to like reply to people straight away. Best thing I ever did over the summer, and I've kept it this way, was I wanted six weeks to really just kind of like enjoy the summertime. Um, and I'm so glad that this kind of didn't come about until, you know, towards the end of summer, thank God. Um, but I took my notifications off my phone. So um, my email, my Facebook, and my Instagram notifications off. The reason I have them on is because I use them a lot for work purposes, okay, so during the day. But during that time, I thought, you know what, everyone's kind of chilling out. This is the best time ever if I'm going to not have it on to, nah. other than when I'm obviously sitting in the office because it's going to pop up on my, my screen or whatever. I never put them back on. I was like, everyone said, you'll never turn them back on. I was like, mm, nope, they were right. I never turned them back on because I noticed every day or every time I'd be in the middle of something and it was like ding, ding, ding. So there, that's my piece of advice there. If you can, or even on weekends, that's the only time I turn it on now because it's generally personal stuff, but maybe pick and choose your times. But notifications, having them off really helps with the social media thing. Um, good thoughts. Yes, good thoughts, Julian. That's a good comment there by you. Um, guys, Julian, I have a very um, <laughs> sisterly brother. Um, banter relationship so don't worry i'm giving him i'm giving him good crap he gives it to me all the time we do it with lots and lots of love um i think that's about it i'm going back down to the bottom again yeah i think i've done everything guys <sighs> i hope that you've gotten something out of that i really do um but yeah it's been lovely to come in here um thank you so much again to the happiness crew for asking me to come on and have a share um, I've loved sharing in every day. Um, thank you, Jules. Thank you for saying that. Appreciate it. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna get. Um, I'm gonna do my gratitudes in here a sec anyway. And uh, you guys will get gratitude, love, and thanks for being here today. Um, but other than that, have a beautiful night or afternoon or wherever you are, everyone. Um, and thank you so much for joining me live. The interaction has been amazing. Um, and yeah, keep supporting the presenters that are in here. Um, I think, and kudos and hats off to all you guys that have popped in here all the time because it's something you've committed to to do something that's good for you every single day. All right, guys, that's it for me. 